INF Nuclear Treaty, Russia Plans New Missile Systems After Pullout. Video. When the United States dropped the first atomic bomb on Japan, everything changed. A few years later, Russia developed atomic weapons of its own. And in the Cold War that followed, the world lived in fear of nuclear conflict. Russia and the United States were eventually compelled to draft a set of rules to avoid catastrophe. But President Trump has announced he wants to pull out of the key agreement, the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. Russia has not, unfortunately, honored the agreement, so we're going to terminate the agreement and we're going to pull out. But do we really need nuclear treaties? Or should we be scared of the nuclear war? So first of all, what did the INF Treaty do? Signed in 1987, it didn't just cut the numbers of missiles that could be deployed, it actually banned a whole category of weapons. Ground launch missiles with ranges of between 500 and 5,500 kilometers. Washington says that Russia has developed a new missile, a version of the Iskander, with a range in excess of 500 kilometers, which is in breach of the treaty. Moscow denies that it's broken the treaty, but the US and its NATO allies are standing firm. So, what's going on? Well, Russia and America have a long history of nuclear tensions. The Soviet Union had insisted that it was sending only defensive weapons to Cuba. But President Trump's concerns about the INF Treaty aren't just about Russia alone. China isn't part of the INF Treaty and has deployed large numbers of these weapons. America and its regional allies, Japan and South Korea, feel at a disadvantage. If America is out of the country, it can deploy and develop new intermediate range ground launch systems of its own. So, what does this mean? There are fears that the whole system of arms control could unravel. Another key agreement, the New START Treaty, which limits long-range nuclear weapons, expires in 2021. Moscow and Washington could agree to extend this, but if mistrust grows between them and this falls apart too, then for the first time since 1972, the long-range strategic arsenals of Russia and the United States will no longer be constrained by any arms control agreement. Already violating the accord, the U.S. are actively working on creating ground-based missiles with the range capability of over 500 kilometers, which is outside the treaty's stipulated limitations. In this situation, the Russian president has set the task for the defense ministry to take tit for tat mirrored measures, he said. The U.S. is yet to respond to Russia's announcement but App News Agency last week cited Trump officials as saying there were no immediate plans to test or deploy missiles banned under the INF. The Trump administration has expressed concern at the threat posed by Russia as well as countries outside the INF, in particular China. Announcing that the U.S. was suspending its involvement in the INF and would leave it completely in six months, President Trump said. We cannot be the only country in the world unilaterally bound by this treaty, or any other. The U.S. accuses Russia of several violations, including their claims a new Russian missile falls within the 500 to 5,500 kilometers, 310 3,400 miles, range banned by the treaty. But Russia says it is the U.S. that has broken the pact and says Washington is using false allegations as a pretext to withdraw from a pact it never wanted to be part of. By Jonathan Marcus, BBC Defense and Diplomatic Correspondent.
given Russia is seen by the U.S. as having already breached the INF Treaty by its deployment of a ground-launched cruise missile. Designated the 9M729 or SSC-8, Moscow is clearly ahead in the race to field its previously banned category of weapons. Reports suggest Russia could already have deployed up to about 100 of these missiles. President Putin is now talking about developing a ground-launched version of the successful caliber naval missile. He has also pointed to a potential hypersonic weapon on which the U.S. believes Russia has been working for some time. So perhaps there is not much that is new here. The U.S. itself is already allocating funds for new missile research and development. But the real arms race here could be in the Asia-Pacific rather than Europe where both Russia and the U.S. are wary of China's growing intermediate-range arsenal which has never been restricted by any arms control agreement.